Melody. Hello, everybody. Um, as you can see, we have Cash here to start off our podcast this week, and uh, it's good to be back. In regards to your first question, I think most of us made it through okay, although Barry isn't in the office today, so we can't speak for him. Uh, <laughs> More than okay. This is whether I'm more than used to. This is the kind of thing I enjoy, which everybody else seems to can't be helped. <laughs> yeah, you would steer us into the sun. I would because it's nice and pleasantly warm. It's kind of dreamy in its own right if you just let yourself roll with it. But as a, a northeast person, I disagree. I but... was born in Washington <laughs> D.C. I'm as northeast as you, but. Shenanigans, yeah. Massachusetts is way more northeast. It's more northeast, but I'm still from the northeast. I'm not That's true. Not surrender that. No, no. All right, and just before we go into any sort of in-depth things about Sunless Skies, you guys can hear us okay cuz we're still kind of testing these lap like uh, lapel mics. Also, you'll have to forgive me today because my brain has turned to mush already. <laughs> well, you're a Fiducci supporter, so I think <laughs> your brain may already be mush. If you couldn't tell, we're having an election in fall in London this coming Monday. I have declared my support for the Valentine's Temperance Campaigner. Just wanted to get that out outright up front so everybody knows. So. <laughs> I'm sure that they will be, well, at least a certain portion of them will be thrilled. That's, that's fine. Anywho, it sounds like the, the mics are working. Audio and video. Excellent. 100%. That's what we like to hear. It is. Um, so you've been obviously continuing to work on various ports for Sunless Skies. That's correct. I have written three by this point, I think. Nice. And we've talked a bit, obviously we've spent many uh, hours talking about bees, but we you've have. probably done some different types of ports since then. So what have you I've been working on? I've tried to. I've been made to. Uh, let's see, Chris has asked uh, quickly if mm -hmm. we can just what's writing on the election. Uh, just just get to that. Um, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, so I shouldn't, shouldn't just mention it. Uh, so Fall in London, very briefly, and then we'll get into uh, some of the skies and the three ports I've written, plus maybe some uh, new ones, some new details on Albion, which I don't think we've shared yet. Yeah, that'll be but, exciting. But uh, in Fall in London, we are holding our yearly mayoral election. We have three candidates in office, sending Ginny, our current mayor, is stepping down after her first term. Very sadly. And, well, that's okay. You know, I... <laughs> Again, voted for the bishop then, but what you going to do? Um, but we have three uh, new candidates who are going to be vying for your vote and your support in this upcoming election. We have the Dauntless Tempered Campaigner, God bless. We have the Ducci, and we have the Implacable Detective. And our players are going to be able to go in uh, mm -hmm. and work uh, together and against each other in order to influence the election. They'll be casting... Uh, themselves for mm -hmm. one candidate. They will be working to empower their vote. Uh, and this year, as, as I think we've just hinted at today, <laughs> uh, they can now work a lot more closely and uh, more competitively uh, with each other. Indeed. But also, not only do you guys have a lot to do in regards to election, but we, you know, have our own bets, which we will we keep. I mean, obviously, you know who Cash is supporting now. And I, myself, am for Fiducci. However, we also have a board in the office, which is full of everybody's names in regards to who they voted for. And I believe, what was the uh, final bet that we're... I actually don't know what the stakes are, but it doesn't matter to me because... Yes, Lottie's being very helpful. It's 30 pounds and one muffin. <laughs> we're not quite sure how that came about. But that's what we're betting for. Um, but yes, and once the uh, votes are all tallied, the mayor will reign for a year. They'll be featured in future upcoming content uh, in their new role as mayor, uh, creating new mm -hmm. stories that uh, you have, you have uh, voted for, really. So it'll yeah. be interesting to see, uh, as long as it's the DTC. Fiducci. <laughs> Prosperity, dignity, T. Prosperity, dignity, dignity is tea. not a fallen London word. I sincerely disagree with you, but I think that's that's enough of that. If we, <laughs> yeah. now we speak can talk politics about some anymore, we'll, this thing will break somehow, and <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and yes, just to answer that quickly, uh, sending Jenny's finishing school mm -hmm. will stick around. Uh, so yeah. So what uh, port would you like to start out with? Oh, well, I've, I've spoken previously of Titania. Uh, mm -hmm. In the interim between then and now, I have written two more ports. Cool. I have just finished Palmer and Plenty's circuits. 
nice. and Leadbeater and Stainrod Nature Reserve. Um, both are quite different, as you might imagine. One's a national park, the other is a shabby but uh, respectable circus, or at least dignified in their own quiet, unhappy way. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll talk a bit about the nature reserve. So Leadbeater, Leadbeater, <laughs> Leadbeater and Stainrod are a uh, manufacturing company, which we saw in, I'm trying to not, not frown too much at these people. <laughs> Uh, Just block them out, that's good. Not saying good things about my candidate. Levier and St. Ross Manufacturing Company uh, in uh, San Lucie, we first met them there. Uh, they have made their claim in the reach with the Leadbeater and St. Ross Nature Reserve, which they funnel a great deal of money into. Mm -hmm. When the player first arrives, uh, there isn't much going on. Uh, there's a very large notice board that the uh, phlegmatic researcher has put up. <laughs> Lovely. Um, the, they are attempting to solve a number of the mysteries of the reach and more importantly direct mm -hmm. uh, those scientific findings to practical uh, ends which the company of course makes a profit off of. Additionally, you have the romantic ornithologist mm -hmm. who is uh, another researcher who's much more deeply buried in the reach. I think actually we're getting art from him very soon. I'm very excited to see that but his great hope is to find a semi-mythical bird um, which is said to take just a grain from the uh, mountains, mm -hmm. from the mount mother mountains of uh, which London is now mining Ooh. to get its time. Uh, it takes a grain and it flies away to no one knows what end, but he is determined <laughs> to, to find this bird. Very cool. And the player can, I mean, whether or not the player actually can get uh, that bird found is uncertain but they can certainly try nice. uh, if it makes them feel better but of course uh, <laughs> as, very it, as it always happens over time um, you start to see the hand of the lead beater and stain rod company making subtle movements you never sure quite what their game is um, but things go depending on how you want to look at it right or wrong mm -hmm. at the reserve and you're you're forced to make a fairly lengthy uh, set of decisions after that regarding um, whether you support one of their new initiatives or mm. not. But That's pretty cool. I didn't know, I, know, I probably should have, but I didn't know that they were from Sun Lucy as well. So oh, yes. They have it's a, nice to a see a the very customer. minor presence in there, but we've, we've certainly brought them up here. Nice. Cool. So, and you guys obviously can ask any questions you want as we're going through if you just helpfully put the at fail butter first. That means we can see it because even though it's on a giant TV screen, it's hard to read all the text <laughs> whilst having a conversation. And no, we definitely would not let Keelan create, or to run rather, because that would be terrifying. We already have enough rats in the office since he's joined. I mean, the office was rats for a day. I yeah. think he had it to himself and I saw pictures of it in. <laughs> oh, I no. thought they were all photoshopped, but uh -oh. they weren't. It's frightening what he can do when he's left to his own devices. But. Yeah, we try to keep him busy so that he doesn't have his own free time. Anyway. Very good. Uh, and um, then, so you said the other one is more of a circus vibe. It is a circus. It is a circus. It okay. is a circus. Um, Polymer and Plenty's Circus, uh, Miss Plenty, of course, would be known to uh, fans of Fallen London. Uh, I, I don't think she, she quite had a presence in Sun the Sea that I, I can recall. Um, she will be here, having established a new business. I, I don't think she'll be there, um, but you, you can visit uh, the circus. It's quite run down. Uh, it's, it's not what it was or maybe what it could be, um, but with the intervention of the captain going in and uh, listening to this ringleader lay out the cards, uh, saying how, yes, there is a clown at the circus. I'll, I'll get to him Sound in a second. Sound far too excited about clowns, but um, continue. <laughs> Well, no, the clown is great, uh, but uh, it's, it's a bit strange, you know, whenever they uh, lay out uh, the cards to tell them how they should go about their business, the results are always the same. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter how you shuffle and cut, uh, the result's always going to be, this is a good idea, this is a bad idea, and they're, they're quite strictly bound. Uh, it's built likewise in the shadow of a gigantic obelisk mm. um, which has been used in order to hold up uh, the, the strands of the tent. Um, the obelisk likewise is covered in certain 
uh, celestial sigils that certain players might recognize, which might have some meaning for, for what happens there. But uh, as you begin to run favors for the circus, uh, this, this clown, for instance, there is a clown um, <laughs> known currently as the Pensive Clown. Um, his, act, no. his act requires him to have uh, costumes for his geese, cuddles <laughs> and ruffles. So you need to, he will give you the stipend, mm -hmm. you will have a porch after unto, you'll run, you'll pick up the clothes for the geese, you'll come back, and now they'll, they'll be happy to come out uh, onto the circus show floor, uh, into the ring, they'll do the full act, it'll be a better circus, you'll get a bit more reward, you'll build up a relationship with him, but in time uh, things fall apart and you get to know uh, the magician better, you get to know the acrobat twins. Uh, the ringleader, the uh, strong woman. Uh, there's one more, but I, I can't bring it to mind readily. Uh, but you, you get to, to, to see who these professionals are. They're all entertainers. They all believe in what they're doing and they want to do it well, even if they're very keenly and painfully aware of their circumstances, mm -hmm. what has brought them there, and why they, they, they just can't leave. Uh, even if they want to, it, it's not something that is possible for them. And it's uh, an attempt to really... Uh, there's a lot more pathos I've tried to instill here mm. um, than some of the other more high-reaching, uh, adventurous, um, <laughs> or be-obsessed uh, ports that I've, I've done. Fair. So I'm going to ask a very serious question. Is the... Uh the costumes for the geese at all influenced by the video of the geese parade? No, not in the slightest. No, there's right now. How can now, you not be like? I think right instilled. now you can put the geese cuddles and ruffles into uh, a nice suit and a dress, uh, <laughs> Victorian safari gear, so a pith helmet and uh, a bush jacket, and I think a jester outfit with little jingle bells. That would be adorable. I'm quite pleased by it. I'm now happier about the clown knowing that. Yeah, that he, he can juggle them, and <laughs> they steal a baguette from a sleeping audience member. It's tremendous <laughs> fun. Excellent. So we've answered clowns. Uh, in regards to the journal, I'm not sure because I think that's more of an in-depth mechanic that probably requires lots of um, sprint work and maybe isn't something we have started. But I'd imagine that, you know, since Sunless Skies and Fall in London have mm -hmm. similar journals, we would probably evolve what we already have into something to work for Sunless Skies, but for now we probably can't speak yes, about as it. As far as uh, fuel and supplies keeping track of prices between ports, I don't know that we will have a way for that. I think there are possibly discussions about it, um, but that's, that's certainly outside of my wheelhouse. That's yeah. not something that I just write the ports. I'm sure we'd have somebody from the tech side of the room come in and chat about that. Well, will there be mirrors at the carnival? Potentially, but I think they're cannier at this circus, uh, given Miss Plenty's uh, experience. She does have her own Hall of Mares there, so that might be an interesting point to look at, but right now it's quite closely knit. Excellent. And then, uh, will it be rats? Not just rats. Certainly it will include rats. I mean, when you play Keelan's mod, that <laughs> makes everything rats, oh, including God. your computer then it's possible, but um, we can't be held responsible for what Keelan mod uh, Space Marine 9 make your computer a rat does to your computer. That was a bit rambling, wasn't it? Oh dear. Well, I mean, I was following along, but it's a Friday, so my brain is, is like just hanging on for dear life. <laughs> Do you, out of, um, so... Mm. The four ports now that you've talked to us about have just been in one region of the higher wilderness. That's that... correct. They have all so far been in the reach. Mm. And we have just settled what we're going to be doing for Albion. Very exciting. Which is the port where Queen Victoria is based. <laughs> where the clockwork sun spins mm. round and round, uh, keeping the entirety of the, the region warm, um, goes bright during the day, comes a bit down during the night, 
Well, they've they've really got it down like clockwork. <laughs> uh, Olivia's going to come in here next, and she's going to be very upset because she will have sensed that a pun has taken place. <laughs> fine. It was less harmful than most. <laughs> Uh, but yes, we, we've just nailed all of that down. Um, I can talk about uh, a number of ports, just in general detail, if, if you would like. Uh, I think there will definitely be plenty of opportunity to talk about them more on different mm -hmm. podcasts. So maybe if there's just one thing in particular you want to tease. I can talk a little bit about the Mutton Island Treaty. Yeah, that sounds good. So certain players of Fall or Sunless Sea uh, might have had it be the case where late into their game they've been sailing around they've come back to mutton island and something is very very different um in one instance it could be that the conate has taken over more specifically the eagle con who is not necessarily at the top of the pecking order in the conate that's the leopard con yeah uh, but they have struck out on their own they have taken power and they have taken over Mutton Island and the Empire has set a barricade around the port. Mm -hmm. Now as it so happens in Sun the Sea or Sun the Sky, uh, that is one of the primary events that kicks off into the skies. Victoria made a treaty. Mm -hmm with this power, giving them the island. And they also gave her one of their own most remarkable inventions, uh, which is something <laughs> that enabled them to open the avid horizon right. without having to go through any of the certifiable, mm -hmm. mad, uh, seeking rigmarole that one might otherwise have to do. Uh, and with the door open, with London being the industrious nation it is, mm -hmm. that's how they get in first, that's how they claim power. And likewise, uh, as part of that treaty, they said that when they take over, they will give a spot of land to the Connacht, uh, mm -hmm. to this Eagle Con, and so they have. Uh, he has set up there in what is currently titled uh, the Empyrean, and the player will have the opportunity to meet the Khan, who, after a series of assassination attempts and other troubles, oh, Lord. has arranged so that no one may come within 500 steps of him. But <laughs> uh, after he holds a contest throughout the Reach, uh, inviting a number of lucky lottery winners into his palace uh, to compete for his friendship, you might be able to learn a bit more about him and maybe a little bit more about what he was holding back when he made that treaty. Ooh. I'm sure that will excite many players because it sounds very lore rich. It for both and obviously not just for his guys, but it should be. And I think that's going to be tremendous fun. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be like over the moon. No now you've got me starting to go into puns. Well they'll be able to run little circles around the moon if they really wanted. <laughs> And the stars. Oh, question. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, that's kind of a good point. No, no, and that's not going to go in there. But, yes. Do you guys have, I would, <laughs> oh God. Oh, God. Do you have any other questions for Cash? Any uh, other questions, I will be happy to answer if I can. Yes. You I can't do. see what's behind this TV, but <laughs> they're, they're tormenting me with, with the bees now, actually. If I say one stray word, then they're going to open up the little flap and bzz, I'm going to, it's not going to be something you want to watch. No, and I'm immune, so it would just be cash. Yeah, I'm just going to be the one that becomes infested. Hmm, I'm not sure if it's so much a secret in regards to that question as perhaps a, a bit more scientific than we generally regard. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, I think, ignore that third blink, and, and those other two. Uh, yes, I think that's something, uh, space in sunless skies is romantic, yeah. uh, with a big old capital R. <laughs> Just like, like we like it at Fail Better Games. Um, so it's space as it, 
But that's not entirely fair. I think it's space as it has been imagined in the past, which was a space that was vivid and alive and I don't want to say meaningful, mm -hmm. but there was a lot more going on up there and it, than we have here. I don't mean to say that space as it exists is dull. It's a beautiful, wonderful, uh, tremendous... It, it's everything, <laughs> isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. it, it, It's us. Um, it's the universe and everything that we are is contained within this, this vast, wonderful thing. But it's perhaps a lot more impersonal than what we're looking at in Sunless Skies. Sunless Skies, space there, has been shaped by personalities. Yeah, space is Baron Munchenhausen might have visited. I do love my Baron, um, but with more bees. Yeah, that's not a bad way of putting it. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it used to be in old uh, medieval astrology that we had celestial rings, you know, and on the very furthest outside was God in heaven, and uh, it would be his influence uh, that turns one ring and turns the next and the next in. All of the music uh, that shutters down from there goes on to influence events everywhere else. Um, but I, I, I am being sensible. <laughs> uh, I also would like to point out that this is a very uh, content team way to answer that question, because I bet you if we had Liam or some other tech in here, they would answer quite differently, or even Paul. Probably would. Uh, which is exciting because I think it's good to know that we're coming from a few different places But that obviously we've all chatted about yeah. how we want skies to feel and act and I think we're all pointing at the same thing. This is just my way to try and Suggest what's there. That's, that's just the way that I tend to understand things and hope to help others understand it um, yeah. Yeah, It's it's a space that's as, as Chris says is poetic um, it's informed by sensibility, not simply by pure physics. Right. Cool. I think that's a great place for us to switch over to, Olivia. So right. you can uh, say your parting words and perhaps some cheers for the campaign. Um, Prosperity, dignity, team. You <laughs> chant that enough times and you cannot help but vote for her. Exactly. Prosperity, dignity, tea. Prosperity, dignity, tea. <laughs> I was going to say, thank God you remembered the mic, because that could have gone horribly wrong. I don't have the mic, but I do have to put down my rather dramatic teapot. It's all right, they'll remember you fondly. Tea, I think, but I don't think the Donald Stimpick's companion would support me if she saw me drinking uh, chilled no. American tea, but that's fine. Hope forever. Definitely not. Cool, and if you could just tell Olivia to come on in, that'd be great, thanks. I just saw myself on James's screen. <laughs> uh, I love when Cash leaves because he just screamed as he exited the room. And now we have Olivia. Come this way, my friend. I brought my phone because I can't remember anything. If you could shut the door, though, that'd be great. So you guys haven't seen Olivia on the podcast yet, so this is an exciting moment for us. Sit down here, and then we have this handy lapel mic, which you can put on your myself. collar. No. This is awful. Oh, you wanted to see yourself? Most yeah, people usually don't. Yeah, I don't. terrible or not. Um, what? What? <laughs> How good. See? Um, yeah. That's why we have Lottie sit behind the screen. It's not actually to push any of the buttons, it's just to make yeah, sure. Okay. There's the camera. Okay. Right, sorry. Excellent. So, this is Olivia. Say hello. Hi. Camera's there, by the way. with the amazing hair. That's all you really need to see. That's all I can offer is amazing hair. Hello. <laughs> Shall I go? <laughs> no. This is the best of me. I have managed to trap you here. I will keep you for a few questions. <laughs> yeah, maybe a small number of bees. Yes, <laughs> yes there's many bees. Um, I first wanted to just have you kind of explain what you do at Fail Better, because I think it's quite unique um, to a game studio. <laughs> Besides jigging, singing, uh, yelling at people for making puns, and threatening with knives. What else do you do? That was literally the first thing I was going to say. Is on a Friday, <laughs> if Haley is very good, I stand by her chair and I dance. I dance badly. And I dance without that music. But and enthusiastically. Yes, no, 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 that, that's what I do. Mm, so, yes. Thank you, it is incredible hair. Um, <laughs> I'm mainly an editor. I do a bit of the writing, but my main thing that I do is editing, which is 
reading everyone else's stuff and telling them why it isn't perfect yet, and then once they've stopped crying, <laughs> enable them to make it perfect so they can go, oh my god, I didn't realise I was capable of this, this wonderful thing. And that's, that's nice, apart from the crying and the, the knives, but, but that's what I do. Yeah, I think it's very like, good to have that at Failbitter though, because they just asked Cash about what space is like in Sunless Skies, and I'm sure you would have like edited that into a few like <laughs> short lines instead of how Cash actually answered. Well, I would have started with the raised eyebrow and gone. Mm. <laughs> I've also like seen me. you uh, threaten people over M dashes, which I'm now concerned about, even though I typically am not under your ed editing peripheral. Punctuation is very important, and bad punctuation makes me sad, and no one likes me sad. No. Happy Olivia is much more entertaining. I bring cake when I'm happy, so Ooh. that. Always a good thing. And so we've had Cash and James on, and they typically talk about the ports, but they've been working more on directly on Sunless Skies than you have, because you obviously have to edit all the stuff that we do. Um, and since we have Paul in London... <laughs> That's quite a lot of words. Yeah. And quite a lot of words consistently mm. as well. Um, not to mention, this is this month's CF, your EF. Yes. So yeah, so she will be the exceptional story. Uh, so she's got quite a lot on her hands, which is why I had to drag her kicking and screaming into the podcast room. Um, but I know, having finally gotten to go to one of the amazing meetings where you guys pitch ports, mm -hmm. that you have done a little bit of that. So it'd be kind of cool if you could talk about the process of how uh, all of the writers and people, not just writers sometimes, pitch ports. Um, it's a really collaborative process, which I know a lot of other game studios don't have, so we're excellent and lucky in that way. Um, basically, Chris will set up a, a PDF where he puts a rough outline of what an area, like a region, Albion or the Reach is about, and then says we need these eight ports or these twelve ports. Pick two, pick three. Um, these are the kind of things I want to see in them, I just want to see roughly what they're about, maybe what a quest would be, and what would be an interesting character there. And just write it up, and then we go into a meeting and present these to everyone else. And the magnificent thing about Chris, and hopefully he's blushing, is no matter what idea you come up with, he goes, oh yes, this thing you've done, tilts it slightly, just holds it up to light and goes, isn't it amazing? And you suddenly go, oh my god, I thought this idea I just pulled out of nowhere might be dreadful. And it's suddenly this really beautiful, interesting thing. So. You get a chance to put your own ideas out there, but you also get a chance to see someone kind of looking at your ideas and going, Chris is embarrassed, but, but actually bringing them out. And the thing is, they are still your ideas, but because you're so close to them, you can't see mm. how they could be used in the context of the greatest thing. And it is the entire team's work. It just takes someone who's got the whole way of looking over it, got the entire kind of context of the game to go, this is how it fits in. It's like turning the puzzle piece and slotting it. And it's really fun because it's your idea and you're kind of seeing it made look really good. And if you're a writer, half the time you go, here is my offering, it's probably terrible because good writers are often people who kind of criticise their work continuously because that's how you improve. So when you have, here is my offering, it's probably terrible, and they get it given back to you and like, it's not terrible. That, that's fun <laughs> and, it's, and it's, it's good. But it also means we can experiment with weird stuff and actually throw something out mm. that might not work. And it can be turned and used in a different way that you completely didn't expect it. So, definitely, I think, like, I can't imagine putting that through other studios, but at Fail Better, it's obviously so important. And I think you're totally right, saying like, the fact that it's a collaborative process makes the writing what it is for Fail Better. I mean, it makes it more rich, but it also makes it more fun because mm. you, you can also swap pieces, like because you all discuss each other's work. To a certain extent, you suddenly have to take an off something to put on something else, which happens to me quite a lot because my main role is editor. Yeah. It goes to someone else, and I don't go, oh no, my baby. I go, oh yeah, you understand, you feed that thing, it's fine. And, and it's, it's a really nice process that you still have my ideas still being worked on, even if I can't do it, as opposed to, oh, I'm busy, I don't get to have my thing there. And um, yeah, I don't think many other studios have that. I wouldn't know, I haven't worked any other ones, but I get the impression they don't, which is really nice for us. Definitely. And if you guys have any questions for Olivia while she's here, feel free to ask away. It doesn't necessarily have to be about the process and things, but obviously that's a very interesting topic that a lot of studios don't necessarily put out on the table in front of people <laughs> to analyze. So, I'm seeing a lot of right-thinking individuals who like hyphens and then dashes. Yay! Um, I'm enjoying Chris's Oh For God's Sake very much. I can even hear the tone of voice. So, yeah. <laughs> And normally Chris sits at your desk, so normally you'd be able to see. <laughs> I'd be able to see the exasperation. Like any time I pay him a compliment, it's like, oh, 
By which I mean he sits on an iPad facing Olivia so that they can chat dur- throughout the day. People about ask Paris me things. to borrow Chris's head, and, yes. and um, sometimes I let them, but you know, it's mine. So you also said, obviously, like you may give away like an idea and somebody else writes it, but you as editor, do you ever? Does that mean that you get the opportunity, kind of at the end, to be like, actually, I meant <laughs> this <laughs> here? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a time where they haven't made my ideas better. Okay. Um, when I'm editing, it tends to be more about how to express the idea they have better, like just to make the phrasing prettier or, oh, oh, I, I, I can undoubtedly skill, spill scarless details on. Um, <laughs> oh, good. Oh, yeah, one of my favourite is the work world. I basically like writing miserable stuff, um, which, yeah. The Everybody will be shocked, <laughs> I am sure. <laughs> I'm a very cheerful person and I'm very nice, so therefore I like writing miserable, dark, horrible things. Um, so one of the work worlds, I, I literally don't know how much we're allowed to talk about. How much is a spoiler? Uh, basically just imagine like, you know, when you see a movie trailer and it gives you all the funny bits and then you get to the movie and you're sad because you've seen them all. Don't do that. So like, oh. kind of tease it a little bit. Like you can okay. talk about it. And I'm sure things may change slightly, you know, before the game comes out anyways, but. Well, basically. It's, it's a particular in Albion, it's a region kind of run by London and we need a lot of stuff produced and producing stuff takes time and obviously there's going to be poor workers who have to do the horrible shit work mm-hmm. um, and, and I got to do one of the ports that was for these poor workers and living there and whether they can escape and what happens to them while they're working on it and it's horrible, it's properly horrible and I love it. Um, <laughs> But it's also about like if these workers kind of get to change roles, do they mm. learn from being in this shitty position, or do they continue being kind of enforcing it on other people? Is like I had a horrible life, so should you. Um, so yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that because it's miserable and that makes me happy. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. But having been there for the pitch of that one, it sounded super interesting, and I don't think it's as necessarily grim uh, throughout the whole thing as Olivia yeah. may have alluded. To. I mean, Grim things can only be grim if they're kind of funny as well, because yeah. otherwise you get bored. Like, I can't, was it Black Hawk Down I watched? Where by the end of it, I literally didn't care about people's bodies exploding because, mm. like, by the first five minutes, you've seen 700 people die and a hand kind of here, and there's just like, oh, it's another one. So I think if you just have relentless gore or relentless grim, mm. you kind of lose the impact. Whereas if you have relentless grim, oh, cheerful note, then you kind of come back to the grim and you're like, oh, it's awful. And so, you, yeah, I prefer Definitely. Especially, obviously, in our games, people generally have some sort of effect or, like, try to mm. work their way <clears throat> through ports or around ports. So I would imagine that's pretty important because otherwise you don't want them to be unsympathetic towards mm. the... But also you want things to be influenceable or else they're just kind of boring things to look at from the outside rather than things you can change a bit. Definitely. And are there any sort of other ports you'd like to tease, or is that kind of it? You don't have to. I think Ash already talked about the circus. Yes, you yeah. did. Okay. That, that, that we talked about uh, geese and costumes. Oh, okay. This is exciting <laughs> ideas I don't have. Uh, one of the benefits of actually not seeing some things written is when I go in to edit it, I can pretend I'm a player, <laughs> and then go, this wouldn't make sense to me without the back law that we know. So quite often, if I haven't edited a piece, I try not to find out anything about it, which is really frustrating, because they're talking about really exciting stuff, and I'm going, don't tell me, I don't want to know, I don't want to know, I need to read it, and then tell you what works and what doesn't, and then it doesn't make I miss out on that. I know what you mean. I was just happy to be included for the uh, pitch meeting, because I was like, ooh, exciting things, and I was like, I had to remind myself not to get too excited, because I had other work to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, Victorian Workhouse, yes, I would imagine it. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. But with our good fail better twist on top. That sounds not good indeed, no. Yep, that that's yeah. <laughs> And you know, as you said, you have been mostly in Fall in London and just a little bit on skies so far, but what other things have been really exciting about Sunless Skies? It's so pretty. It's <laughs> it so pretty. pretty. It's like I mean words the words are important. I really like words. <laughs> but the art, it's so pretty. It's like things keep coming across the to our, our side and it's like <laughs> it's amazing! So I'm, I'm a little bit excited about just looking at it. Yeah. This is a nice game. And that's how I feel every like sprint review meeting we have, because I don't usually get to know much at all until those meetings. So whenever I get to see all the pretty UI and the pictures and like the ideas you guys have reports and different mechanics, I'm like, yes! <laughs> Finally! I, I could totally just play through it as some kind of sightseer, just going, oh, this is pretty, please don't kill me. Oh, this is so nice! <laughs> so yeah. 
Very good. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, otherwise I think we'll be ending shortly as we have a very fun task to do today, <laughs> which includes moving all the things on both sides of a wall, uh, which connect into this room where we podcast so that we can knock it down over the weekend. Uh, I like moving furniture. This is actually a nice thing. <laughs> and there's air conditioning well, here, which is so good. That is true. We're also trying to, as you guys saw earlier, uh, put some distance between the people that get hot and cold, <laughs> which tend to be me and Cash on polar opposite sides. So that should be good when we return Monday and we can all be comfortable. And it'll be, if Otherwise I'm getting him a blanket. It's the only yes. way I need air conditioning. <laughs> Agreed. Well, they started out asking whether or not we had survived the wrath of the sun god. I turned into a sand golem. I was useless for two days, so no. She was very quiet. It was frightening. <laughs> you don't want a quiet Olivia. They're very stealthy or sad. Either way, not good. Oh, well. And um, when, so do you know when you'll be shifting more to skies or is, is it always predominantly from London? after the ES. So I finished this exceptional story and probably the hub and then I'm more sun the skies. Mm -hmm. So next month. So that's great. That's not too far away then. Mm. And yeah, we'll be, you'll be coming with me to develop for a day as well. So that will be yep. exciting where we go and talk to other game people about all our, our awesome things, but steal their ideas, make them better. <laughs> Shh, don't say that publicly, then they'll know. But if you make them better, they're our ideas, so that's fine. Hmm. Indeed. All right. Now well, to edit an ES. <laughs> yes, Olivia. Quite a while. Um, it depends on who's written it, um, because it's not so much about the quality of the writing, but whether it fits for London style. So if it's a freelancer, it can take several days just because they've written a really good story, but the actual style is not ours and needs to fit. So often it'll be thinking up and suggesting rephrasing completely, but it really depends. And if they're familiar with our writing, then less. Mm. This is you. Uh, we do occasionally go to cons. We've been to MCM uh, within the past, well, probably a little over a year now. Uh, we would normally do more of them, but this year we're going a little easy on them because it's just me here since Hannah's on leave. Um, and possibly in the future, but it's so hard to go to the US because it's so very big and we it's hard to tell which con would be the best one to go to because obviously all of you guys are spread out across, like from California to Massachusetts. So if you give us ideas on which ones you want us to go to, then we'll certainly consider it because um, Hannah has gone to TwitchCon before, but I think that's the only consumer facing one that we've gone to in the US. Uh, and then let's see what the other two questions are. I can ask last one easier. Um, Fiducci, because he's hot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're now in a room of Fiducci supporters, so I feel pretty good about yeah. this. I mean, Lottie is as well. Cash and James have done quite a lot of the writing, so they may have, I don't know, thrown yeah. terrible things in as soon as they knew that I would be sort of someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they don't have like the marketing brain behind it, or true. you know, there's some tech people involved too that are you know, not for... We, we can rig this. this yeah, fine. it'll be fine. Um, which ports am I working on? Um, not actually writing any at the moment. But I was behind the circus, um, the work world, uh, Avid Horizon. There's one other one. I can't remember what's name. <laughs> it's, I will. They'll see uh, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll write my own soon, then I'll for it. But, um. Yeah, well, once you have digested more, we'll have you back on, and then you can dive into all sorts of other horribly grim and sad things. Tell them all the secrets, and then have Chris talk in front of you. No! Yeah, you can see Chris panic. Oh, yeah, yeah that'd be good. Yeah. He's usually lurking in the background, answering many people's questions, so that'd be perfect. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Comic-Con, I assume you mean the one, mm. well, San Diego, question mark, and or New York would probably be the two bigger ones. Um, Possibly. We've also had a few people request packs as well, but we will keep that in mind for when Hannah returns and there's more marketers here to, to manage such things. But I think for now we shall depart gloriously and end the podcast so that we can continue to break down walls and be destructive in a fail better way. Yeah. Cool. So we will have Lottie start the buttons <laughs> and see ya.